Hello big boys, today we're going to talk about a card that I believe can save us all from the dumpster fire that is the current modern metagame. And our savior is Deflecting Palm. It says if a source would deal damage to us, it is instead dealt back to its controller. And to appreciate why this card is so relevant, I present to you the best history lesson of your entire life. Rewind to the modern metagame of January 2016. It was a simple time where a creature with insane power meant Tarmogoyf. And the fastest deck in the metagame was Affinity, but the fastest and most consistent deck in the metagame was Naya Burn. And I can confirm that as someone who played Naya Burn every day for nine months straight. But now let's fast forward to just a few months later where we see the rise of two big creatures, Suicide Zoo's Death Shadow and Jeskai Nahiri's Emrakul. Both of these decks are a bit iffy for Burn to deal with. Death Shadow can outspeed Burn, and Jeskai Nahiri, despite looking like an easy deck for Burn to deal with, has quite a bit of life gain to give Burn a lot of problems. So what does Burn do? They bring in Deflecting Palm. But wait, why bring in Deflecting Palm against Emrakul if Emrakul has protection from colored spells? And that's why Deflecting Palm is such a cool card because it says the word source, not target. So in other words, hexproof protection, none of it matters because Deflecting Palm can pick anything. Now fast forward again to nine months later and the metagame changes yet again. Emrakul decks like Jeskai Nahiri fall out of the metagame and we begin to see the rise of Grixis Death Shadow. So what does Burn do? They start to remove their Deflecting Palms from the sideboard because even though Death Shadow is a great target for Deflecting Palm, it's just not great when they have Stubborn Denial along with a bunch of discarding stuff. And on top of that, there really aren't enough big creatures in the metagame to justify putting in Deflecting Palm. So that's really the last time we see the card. But now let's unfortunately fast forward to today's metagame. And oh boy, oh, like what happened? I find it quite ironic that Tarmogoyf used to have the greatest power in the format. And nowadays it has the least power in the format. And much of that is owed to the big thing and the big hoe. And now let's once again talk about Burn. And despite being the seventh most played deck in the format, it ain't doing so hot. Because even though it's seeing a lot of play, it also just so happens to cost much less than any other top nine deck. Because how many people want to spend $1,760? $1 on a gen deck. Not I. What this all boils down to for Burn is that despite once being the best combination of speed and consistency, it is now neither fast nor consistent. And that's why I think Burn's gotta take a different approach, and I think that different approach is Deflecting Palm. So today's deck is Old School Naya Burn with Deflecting Palm's main deck, three of them. And I know skeptics out there are gonna say, well, what if we're up against a deck without a lot of creatures, in which case Deflecting Palm's gonna slow us down. And to that, I would point out that Searing Blaze is also bad against non-creature decks, but it's still a four of in most Burn decks, because dealing six damage for two mana happens to be really good. And in the very likely case that we see a big thing or a big hoe, then Deflecting Palm is essentially a lightning helix with a penis enlargement. And Deflecting Palm leads into why we have green in the deck and that has become immense because it would be most gangster to pump our opponent's creature for six and then deflect all of it back at them. And since we have green, we might as well go wild in the coddle. Other than that, we have a lot of overlap with Boros Burn. So now on the sideboard, Graveyard Hate, Creature Hate, Aggro Hate, Life Gain Hate, Artifact Hate, and the Chandra against Control Deck so she can deal two each turn, plus a fourth Deflecting Palm. That's the deck. Let's finally get to the gameplay, but first be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. But without further ado, here's a gameplay, and I hope you enjoy. An opening hand, one lander, but we do have a turn one creature, so we'll keep. Swing for two, lava dart on top, so we're probably up against Phoenix. Old Scar Mage, so mono red Phoenix. And then swing for two. Oh, they hit a land. And suspend Rift Bolt back to them. Monastery. And Lava Dart the Goblin Guide. So I guess we're gonna flash it back. Yeah. We take six. And given that we're stuck on land, we probably should play things a little defensively here. Pick out the Soul Scar. Goblin Guide, yeah. Hit them for two. Two. Back on their turn, they lava spike us, hitting us for two. And that hoe. Wow, we're really not pulling that second land. And I suppose just take out that thing. But it ain't looking good. Swing for two. Another soul scar. Ooh, they pass back. Interesting. Playing the soul scar. And finally a land. And to play things safe, a lightning helix them now. Back to them. They lava spike, hitting us for two. Draw a card. And then back on our turn. With three cards in hand, they very likely have the win. Because in the burn mirror, it really comes down to creatures, and they have out creature does. I mean, we could try and give this thing double strike. Pretty stupid, but we'll do it. But that is assuming that their four cards in hand are nothing. Oh, but they pass back. Okay, Boros charm them directly, even though I imagine they have lethal here. No? Okay. Land, swing for two. They block. And they just let it die. Okay. So we'll try and play things grande here. Hit them for four. Do we play an Eidolon? Yeah, super risky though. That does kind of lock things down a bit. But if they have a bolt, they win. No bolt, and they concede with five cards in hand. None of those were bolts. I, I I don't know, but we'll gladly take the win. Going into game two, we're on the draw against Burns. We're gonna dump the Eilons for this stuff. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand, we got some creature stuff. We got the lands for that. So it looks good, we'll keep. We'll Scar Mage. We'll start with the Nacoddle. They Faithless Looting. And then they Bolt the Nacoddle. Back on our turn, we'll play Lava Mancer and Rift Bolt. And if they're lucky, by next turn, we'll have Deflecting Palm and Boros Charm ready. Assuming we'll have big creatures out. Arc like Phoenix. Oh, they Bolt the Lava Mancer. One more, please no. Ah, oh, so it's been a good turn for Deflecting Palm. 
Earth Bolt comes down. Take out that hoe. And oh, that's actually a very nice pull. Play that tap. Fire it now. And it's still not looking good, though. They're at 17. We're at four. So we'll take a Christmas Miracle to win. They pass back to us Helix. That is quite good. They faith us looting yet again. Dumping two lands. We shall Helix. And do we hold this for Searing Blaze or get an extra white for these two? And extra white. And another Lightning Helix. I like that. They Manamorphose. Manamorphose again. And they could flash back Faithless Looting to get back Arc Light. Yeah. But just one. And do we Deflecting Palm? Yeah, we should. We deflect three back at them. This guy. Do we kill it? Let's Boros Charm them and see what we draw. Monastery. Yeah, we'll play it. And we'll try and be clever. Swing in. They block, then hit them directly. So we'll need a gut shot to save this hoe. And no gut shot. Dang. And talk about turning things around. Nine to four. They draw. Another Soul Scar Mage. We're still in rough territory here. Six. Oh, that's bad. That is very bad. We'll have to bluff. Hold back. They go looting. Dumping a bolt in monastery. How good is that? Okay, it's a bolt there. Okay, so that's lethal with six. Darn. Almost turned it around, but not quite. Going into game three, since we're now on the play, I'm going to bring back in the Eilons and go full aggro, dumping these three in with that. Let's go to game three. Opening hand. Yeah, we have the creatures, so we'll keep playing for two. They start with the monastery, and they're going for aggro as well. Deflecting palm, and we'll dump both of our creatures. Swing for five. Oh, we hit one mountain from that. Animorphos on top. They fire the Animorphos. Full Scar Mage. And then bolting us. Swinging for three. We go down to nine. And a Helix. Nice. We will fire that now. Taking out Soul Scar. Hitting them for six. Another Animorphos on top. They fire it. And Lava Dart. So they're going to double Lava Dart. Yeah, putting two in Graveyard. So they want to be super aggressive here. They can fire both deal six. And they choose not to swing in. That certainly makes things interesting. But we will swing in. Sunbake Canyon off the top. They block like that. But neither of us do anything there. And we could suspend the Rift Bolt. But I think we better just keep these open and potentially get them right here. Bedlam Reveler. And yes, make this guy big. Two Phoenixes. Ah, that's okay. I mean, they Lava Dart us. Lava Dart again. But looky here, they're going to swing in and they think they're so clever. But like my mama always say, Abre tus nalgas. Because four goes back to them. And with the Lightning Bolt, that's lethal. And what a kinky way to end the match. But more kinkiness is yet to come because now on to the next one. Opening hand, the curve looks pretty nice here. So we're going to keep starting with Goblin Guide. Fully on the veil on top. And they pass back. I expect removal here. And for the sake of the curve here, let's play Eidolon. Now swing for two. They hit a land. Wah, wah. And then back to them. Oh, and they kill Eidolon. Okay. Then they pass back. Now we shall make Big Boy Explosion Monastery, followed by a double Lava Spike. And understandably, there is the concede. Game two, no change to sideboard, and our hand looks a little slow. But yeah, we'll keep. They pass back. Goblin Guide. Swing with the guide. Ren. And they bolt. Now let's risk it here and go with Eidolon. Back to them. They pass back to us. Monastery. Yeah. Swing for three. All against command. And we'll have to discard probably the Lava Mancer because they have Ren in hand. And then suspend the Rift Bolt and pass back. Four lands, Blood Braid, and an Inquisition. So they know the Deflecting Palm's coming, just like their mama. All right, we take the three. Rift Bolt them directly. We also have a Boros Charm. I suppose, swing in. We're getting very low on life. So the question is Boros Charm or hold for Deflecting Palm? We'll be aggressive even though we're risking it here. Four to them, down to five, back to them. On it plays Tarmogoy and a Ooze. The Ooze will be troublesome. We go to six and a land. Nice. Now here here's where things get tricky. We can go land, Searing Blaze, kill that, deal three to them. Then we won't be able to play this and they can block that. And next turn they can turn that into creature, swing in for four, seven, a lot. So maybe the best case scenario here, we try and tie them, but uh, yeah, it looks like they have us. So we're just gonna play it out in the off chance they misplay. This very tricky, I suppose. Block here, and then we'll deflect this hoe here. So now what will they do? They buff the ooze, putting them back at seven, now down to four. So for us to win, we're gonna need to hit a bolt, which is definitely possible. <sighs> but no. And a 19 land deck. Crap. That's a bummer. So we're going to game three. Game three, no change to sideboard, and our hand is balls, so we're gonna mull. Ooh, extra balls. Oh, not a good way to lose. Uh, mull. At least you have a creature. Starting with monastery. Hitting them for one. They play land. And oh boy, we can play something this turn. Ah, oh, but they fatal push it, which probably means they have removal for this. Yeah. Oh, and they inquisition us to take the bolt. Oh, at least we can play this. I'm a goy. Oh, we're gonna lose to a mulligan. Holy crap. They play another guy swinging for five. Oh, lava spike. Here, let's help him out a bit. Oh, there we go. I mean, they didn't even need the help. They were gonna deal 10 to us anyway. Oh, what's that? You want more help? Oh, we'll give you some more help. Here, how about this? That will help on top of a mulligan the four. Oh, we just had to top deck a land game too. But now on to the next one. Opening hand. Too many lands, so we're gonna mull. Oh, that really bad mull. We'll have to make this work. Starting with monastery swing for one. What the hell be she? Oh, ray crawler. And back on our turn goblin guide swing for three they get a 16 blood gas on top they play carrion feeder and another grave crawler hitting us for two 
another creature can block though and then we shall swing in for three we could make it four we find our top yeah it's a big hoe deck we want the lava mancer uh, yeah i suppose we go lava mancer okay back to them it's so strange being in a position where it's like we want them to get the big hoe out that is assuming we hit a second land they hit us for five uh six yes six indeed and then they pass back land hooray and we could hit them down to one this turn with the bull lava mancer and these two so close but we'll swing for three they hit a land and then back to them they play blood gas hmm but now here's where things get grande blood gas has haste because we have less than 10 life but we helix them now we up to 12 11 yep yeah, we should do that as much as i want to deflect them he looks them directly and that draws out the concede from them go in the game two we're gonna dump all this stuff for all this stuff and with that let's go game two opening hand we have one land with the nakaddle but we have searing blaze it would be nice to have a second land with the searing blaze but we do have surgical so we'll risk it and keep oh and they're splashing for the hedron crab okay and we could bolt it now nah, let's play nakaddle back to our opponent want to play supplier nothing plays land to mill for two nothing and a grave crawler and then back on our turn oh might as well get this show on the road swing in for two they obviously chomp one grave crawler do we hit it because they could recast it yeah i suppose we'll risk it oh sweet jesus luckily they have no way of discarding them at the moment they also brought in two nature's claims what a loser oh it plays land faith is looting yep flashes back dumping the venge vine and yeah we'll take the two. Oh yes so we'll go with searing blaze this game but the question is do we take out grave crawler or the crab if we kill grave crawler and they play another zombie they can recast it from graveyard getting the venge vines back so we should probably just kill the crab instead so time to burn in hell crabby and then swing for six they go to seven. Oh, they have a carrion feeder which means they can recast that oh it looks like we'll use it defensively here we'll take two then i imagine they sack it the venge lines back to block yeah if we can just pull land here we win oh, 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 oh. it's the big hoe please land ah! and no deflecting palm either yeah with trample there's no way we can absorb this and we can try and bluff lava spike can hold the bolt but they would have to have the mega downs to go down to three. Oh, gemstone oh well, yeah and it looks like we're going to game three pray for deflecting palm mm, i mean it's not a bad hand yeah we'll keep it i want a deflecting palm them starting with the nakaddle oh, but they pass back that is rather strange i'm gonna spank them for five. Oh, and they lightning axe the hose there too all i want is deflecting palm is that too much to ask for they play a wayfinder and they put a land in hand with a grave crawler and graveyard well let's play a monster and boros charm them yep and they draw a card and they go down to 10 but they're not looking super good over here the lands down to one counter no creatures out for the big hoe unless they play a creature here as a zombie oh there we go and of course they get grave crawler back which means they can play the big hoe oh the fucking palm please mm -hmm. this hurts my butthole all right swing in i draw another card going down to five back to them and what is this altar of dementia okay they swing for 10 and then will they alter the hoe yep two venge vines another hoe and a grave crawler and they recast the grave crawler and then they'll recast the big hoe they put themselves down to three to get all these guys back and all we need is a bolt will the magic gods be on our side let's find out this game's racist there's oh my god we have four deflecting palms in the deck and we can't draw a single one in the past two games and, oh you could have used a bolt like it, there's so many things that could have happened like it, it's racist it's racist oh, here, here there we go good old monastery we can draw three monasteries but no deflecting palm okay but luckily we have four blockers oh wait wizards gave that trample so blockers don't matter well how about that where is the palm at oh, there it is here's what we're gonna do we're just gonna move on pretend like this didn't happen this match didn't happen now weren't those two matches fun i stand by what i said about the fucking palm i think it's really good green in the deck on the other hand i'm not so sure about we did not see become immense and wild in the coddle i mean a 3-3 by turn two isn't that crazy anymore so now i'm really curious what deflecting palm and a boros burn deck would look like and if you guys are curious about that as well then let me know in the comments and also i have made more deck boxes but that is all for now and as always i hope you have a great day